Hi, my name is Tori and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means that I treat things that can go wrong around the pelvis. This includes painful sex as well as bladder dysfunction, which is how I was first introduced to mycoplasma. I've had two female patient cases now where the root cause of the person's pelvic symptoms was mycoplasma. And I also had someone reach out to me on my website and share a personal story story about mycoplasma and request that I make a video about it because there aren't really a lot of good resources available for someone trying to learn about the bacteria and figure out whether or not their symptoms are being caused by that bacteria. I'm honored to be doing request videos and I'm really excited to share what I've learned with you. Also, if you want to skip around, you can check out the description below. There will be timestamps for this video. So mycoplasma is a kind of bacteria and there are actually two 200 different types of mycoplasma that can live in our bodies. And for the most part, these microorganisms, these bacteria, are harmless. However, there do seem to be a few types of this bacteria that can lead to an infection if they overgrow. Those specific types are mycoplasma genitalium, mycoplasma hominis, and urea plasma urealyticum. In the same way that a yeast infection, whether it's in the mouth or in the vagina, is just an overgrowth of an otherwise harmless microorganism that lives naturally in our bodies, these certain kind of mycoplasma can overgrow and cause infections too. These infections tend to mimic urinary tract infections, sexually transmitted infections, other bacterial infections like yeast and bacterial vaginosis, as well as painful bladder syndrome and interstitial cystitis. It's important to pause here and mention that these bacteria have been studied decently well in men but really haven't been studied well at all in women so for the majority of this video I will be speaking through the female lens however if you are a man and you do have these symptoms I highly recommend that you see a trusted physician and get some testing done so common symptoms of a mycoplasma infection that I've read about and also heard firsthand are urethritis which is the inflammation of the urethra which can lead to painful urination like burning and stinging with urination itching and unusual or foul smelling discharge that can come either from the head of the penis in men or the urethra in women which can kind of mask as a foul vaginal discharge even though the urethra and the vagina are different if you want to learn more about female internal anatomy you can watch this video, which will also be linked in the description below. Other symptoms worth mentioning would be increased bladder frequency and urgency, making it feel really, really urgent when you have to urinate and feeling like you have to urinate more often than usual. A resting sense of bladder or pelvic discomfort, lower abdominal pain, and even vaginal swelling or bleeding, especially during or after sex. There are also links to pelvic inflammatory disease, which is the inflammation of the reproductive organs in females, as well as upper urinary tract infections, which would be more like a kidney infection, which can be incredibly painful. But here's the catch. If you test for a urinary tract infection or a sexually transmitted infection or yeast infection or bacterial vaginosis, all of these test results are going to come back negative. So then we've got humans, like the person who requested this video and my two patients who walk around with these untreated infections and bladder and pelvic pain symptoms for months, even years in some cases, and then this person will usually end up with an incorrect diagnosis of something like interstitial cystitis or painful bladder syndrome. The reason that these bacteria are so difficult to find to test for is multifold. First of all, they are very, very small. They're actually the smallest form of free living bacteria that we found to date, and so they're really hard to see under a microscope microscope. Further, these bacteria don't have cell walls, they have cell membranes. And the reason that this note is important, that this detail is important, is because a lot of antibiotics target cell walls. They're called cell wall inhibitors. That's how they attack bacteria and essentially kill bacteria. But if bacteria doesn't have a cell wall, then a cell wall inhibitor isn't going to touch them, let alone hurt them. Sometimes women with these clusters of symptoms will be given antibiotics anyway, but if 
if the antibiotic is a cell wall inhibitor, then nothing is gonna change. The status of the infection isn't gonna change, but you might experience a little bit of relief because most antibiotics have an anti-inflammatory component to them, kind of like taking ibuprofen, but nothing will actually change at the core of the infection. Additionally, some of these bacteria are really slow growing, so they don't show up in a normal urine culture, like the one that you get if you're getting tested for a urinary tract infection. Instead, your physician needs to collect either a urine sample or a swab, either a swab of the urethra or a swab of the vagina, and then ask specifically that it get tested for these bacteria. Some of the bacteria can be tested for with a urine sample, as long as the person testing knows that they're specifically looking for that bacteria. But the way to test for all three of the potential bacteria is with something called PCR analysis, polymerase chain reaction analysis. Essentially what that test does is looks for the DNA of those bacteria, and if the DNA is present, then you've got the bacteria. Another complicating factor about testing for mycoplasma is really well said in this 2017 systematic review. Mycoplasma species relevant to the urogenital tract include Mycoplasma hominis, Mycoplasma genitalia, and Urea plasma urealyticum. Their occurrence in the context of urogynecological disease has been demonstrated in urethritis, which again is just the inflammation of the urethra that we talked about earlier, cystitis, which is the inflammation of the bladder, and upper renal tract infections, aka kidney infections, which we also discussed earlier. Their role in hyperactive bladder and interstitial cystitis slash painful bladder syndrome is controversial. All the above mentioned microorganisms can occur as commensals or as potential pathogens. In most cases, their role in any particular pathology cannot be proven, only presumed. Let's break down that last little bit, the part about these microorganisms being commensal. Commensal is a word given to a relationship between two organisms, where one organism is benefiting from the relationship and the other organism isn't benefiting but also isn't being caused any harm. So a good example of that are all of the bacteria that live in our mouth. We have some bacteria that live in our mouth and they're benefiting from living there, but they aren't hurting us or helping us. It's just a commensal relationship. So far, it seems like mycoplasma fall into that same category because they're present in women and men who have absolutely no symptoms. So if those test results come back positive, it's still up to your physician to deduce if the mycoplasma that are living in your genital or urinary tract are in fact pathogens and mean to cause you harm or are just part of a commensal relationship and aren't harming you at all. Finally, <laughs> these bacteria can be resistant to antibiotics. So from what I've read, it's important that before you start an antibiotic dosage, that if you can, you get the bacteria tested for antibiotic resistance. If you are curious about treatment options, about treatment regimens, here is another screenshot from that same 2017 systematic review outlining antibiotic treatment regimens. While you look over the treatment options, I do want to say another quote from that same 2017 study out loud. Treatment of the patient's partner with the same antibiotic shown to be effective in the index patient is generally recommended, which just means that you and your partner, if you're sexually active, should both be on the same antibiotic. Condom use or abstinence from sexual intercourse is recommended until symptoms have resolved. The last point that I want to touch on is whether or not mycoplasma truly are sexually transmitted infections. So we do know that mycoplasma can be spread from sexual contact, aka genital to genital touching, but there are parts of what we know about mycoplasma that make defining it a sexually transmitted infection a little bit more difficult. For instance, we know that mycoplasma is found in both women and men's genitourinary systems. Even though it's found more often in women than men, it's still found in both. And in both cases, there are women and and men that have mycoplasma in their genitourinary tracts with absolutely no symptoms. Mycoplasma also seems to be opportunistic bacteria, which just means that it's found in really healthy people and it's also found in people who have some other disease that might compromise their immune systems, but it's not one or the other, it seems to be found in both. And then the real catch to try and qualify it as an STI is that we have proof that it is found in sexually inactive women's genitourinary tracts as well. 
technically mycoplasma can't be considered a sexually transmitted infection yet because we don't know what the long-term effects of having the bacteria are anyway. Whereas with other sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea and chlamydia, if those go left untreated, they do eventually harm the reproductive organs. So needless to say, we definitely do not have all the answers and we're still learning about mycoplasma and what role they play in our body, if any. So to recap, mycoplasma is a type of bacteria that is found in some women and some men's urinary and genital tracts and it's entirely harmless, whereas in other cases it isn't harmless, it's harmful. It is tricky to test for and if you are having these symptoms but you're coming up negative with a bunch of other tests like UTIs, STIs, BV, yeast on down the chain, then talk to your physician about specifically testing for mycoplasma plasma because again it's tricky to identify and it does need very specific types of testing. While we know that it can be spread from sexual contact it's technically not an STI because we don't know what the long-term effects are and it can be found in sexually inactive women so hmm. Okay, I hope that all of that information was helpful. I didn't touch on a different type of mycoplasma, mycoplasma pneumoniae, which is tied to lung infections because that doesn't have to do with our pelvis. And I also didn't touch on the potential relationship between mycoplasma and miscarriage, as well as premature births, mostly because I wanted to keep this video succinct for you. But if you wanna see a video about that, just let me know or if you'd like to see a video maybe more broadly about the different kinds of bacteria that live in the vagina, I'd be happy to do that as well. Really, if you have any requests or suggestions for any future content, just let me know in the comment section below. Please feel free to comment any questions or ideas or anything on your mind. I really do try to read and respond to all of my comments. Also, please like this video if you found it helpful, share it, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content surrounding pelvic health. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.